picked up earlier this week this MEP 803 Alpha generator mounted onto this trailer and uh, brought it home and uh, it already had oil, fuel, coolant, everything in it and uh, it started and uh, made power and uh, made a YouTube short on it. Link is down in the description. A few of you said you wanted to see me go through the repairs and everything to uh, get it fully operational. So this is going to be the first video going through what needed to be done. There were a few notes in that YouTube short on what was missing in it. Uh, I will go through that in a little bit more detail in this, but I wanted to show something unfortunate that happened. So a couple days ago, we had a crazy storm roll through. That's why my son is on the generator picking up all the sticks. And a tree fell on it. Uh, I don't think there's really any damage to the actual generator itself, but unfortunately the body got pretty damaged. First thing in this little video series on this is going to be just cleaning up and getting the tree off this. So if you want to skip it, all the different timestamps for going through the different repairs and things for this are down in the description. So you can skip it if you want. And I'm going to move on to the actual repairs that were needed for the generator, but I'm going to get the tree off of it, remove the body panels and bang out all the damage on there. My wife and family started picking up some of the small stuff already. But uh, I got to take the saw. I ripped, took this down by hand and cut up all the big stuff and get it out of here before I could even start doing the repairs. And but it doesn't look like it's broke. It doesn't look like the radiator got hit. So it looks like everything could be bent back in theory. All right, we're gonna remove the MEP803 from the trailer using the LMHC on the LMTV. Hopefully it can lift it. Let's see what happens. I hope if I turn the, uh-oh. Oh yeah, I gotta plug it into the truck. <laughs> Move your chair, please. Can you put it over by the front of my truck? Basically, I'm just gonna start by taking the top covers off. I'm gonna get that door off and the back panel off just so I could start going through and checking everything. I'm gonna replace the fuel return lines. I'm gonna try to bang out these body panels and door, straighten out whatever else is bent. Just make sure everything is okay. Gonna watch me do all that body panel removal and stuff and fast forward. All right, we got all the panels off, my helpers back again today. And the next step is just gonna be, like I said, we're gonna try to hammer those out. And then if there's time, I'm gonna start removing the rest of the stuff like the air cleaner and the muffler. And that exposes everything really nicely to be able to replace the uh, fuel return lines and just get in there and clean everything up really nice. And then also I will install the alternator and the missing bolt and stuff that I have in the belt.
This isn't pretty, but it certainly is a lot better than it was before. You can see it's not rebolted. Uh, I just kind of wanted to get it on here and see what it was going to be like. Once I'm finished doing the work that I need to do under this panel and it's all refastened down, I'll be able to hammer on it some more once it's attached and probably make this look a little bit more square because it's still going to interfere with the door a little bit. Uh, door straightened out pretty good. This is straightened out <clears throat> much better than it was. Straightened out the flapper on top. All right, at this point, you just watched me fast forward doing a bunch of stuff and I'll talk over it. Like I said, removed all this. I replaced the fuel return lines and routed them through here. I haven't done anything in the tank area yet. Put a belt on and put the missing bolt for the alternator bracket. I put a set of batteries in here. Uh, I do not have the trays or the hold down brackets in yet because I'm going to be doing some more work. I just put it in there. The connectors and everything for the oil pressure sender or whatever in here those need to be redone uh, overall neaten some stuff up I noticed that almost every single one of the little clamp connectors going into the injection pumps they were like barely on this one was not on at all that's part of the reason why along the engine block here it's all wet cleaned up a little bit and everything down in here leaving the top cover and all that stuff off and obviously bang that stuff out and on this side you can see the batteries in here the bolt Belt is tight, missing hardware, alternators mounted back up. You can kind of see where the fuel return line is. So my first thing here is I don't really expect anything to not work. I'm going to move it back to normal and give it some power and let it prime for a bit. I have not put power onto this with batteries whatsoever. Okay, it sounds like it's priming. That's good. I'm gonna look for any leaks. Yep, something's leaking right there. You can see it getting wet right away. That's probably that clamp up there not getting on. So before I even move any farther, I'm gonna try to figure that out. I think where the leak is coming from, I'm gonna do my best to show it. You can see where the clamp was for the longest time right there. I think what it did is where I can't see it on the other side. It actually dug into the rubber and there's a little crack. So I'm gonna have to rebuild this section of hose right there to fix that. For the time being, I'm still gonna try to start it. So I'm gonna set this up on the tripod. pressure is working now. This is incorrect because it's a 400 hertz gauge. I don't know if this gauge is dead. Power meter is working. Panel lights, except that left one work. That's all a very good sign. It blew a whole bunch of dust around from when I had to cut up the tree. I do not see any apparent fuel leaks from my fuel return lines, which is good. Batteries were charging. I'd like to see if that coolant temperature gauge is working, but this thing leaking the fuel that it's leaking. Okay, it's a hot South Texas day and I got the garage closed up, the air conditioner humming in the background. So my goal now is to troubleshoot and hopefully fix that fuel leak, change the fuel filters, change the oil, and then I got my battery trays and my hold downs and everything ready. So I'm gonna put the batteries after I do all those changes, put the batteries back in, put the battery clamps in, get all that set up, reprime the system, and then hopefully check to see that I got no leaks with the new fuel filters, uh, water separator, that, that fuel leak is gone. Uh, we'll see.
All right, got the fuel rail off, fuel filter, and the water separator off here, and getting ready to install it. And I noticed what the issue is here. So you can see how the braiding has kind of split on the fuel tube, and it's doing it on two of them. So I'm gonna just replace all four of them, and I'm gonna use the fuel hose that was laying in the bottom because it's in immaculate shape for the fuel water separator drain because the one that I'm gonna use doesn't even have that and I don't really like it on there anyway, you just put a cup under. When you remove this, there's two seal washers. You wanna inspect them and make sure they're gonna be okay so when you close everything back up, you know it's gonna seal right. Almost every single one of these I've taken off, they've always been okay, so I've never needed to replace one. Make sure when you take this off, this gasket does not always come off with it make sure you take that off i just realized i wanted to splice in here the filter that i pulled off the machine was installed upside down uh, on the filter the side with the smaller hole goes down to seal against that o-ring down there and the spring pushes up on the filter you can see how it's like spring loaded and then this goes around that hole to seal it when it gets pressed up against it. Uh, usually the writing is facing up too. Um, I think that was upside down. And then on the water separator, this comes at least on the Wix filter around the drain. Uh, this is not used in the application on this generator, so it just gets tossed or you could save it for something else you might need it. Uh, just so you don't think that it's supposed to be used or it was missing neither does this one this one does not come in the wix filter so you need to make sure that that's in good shape and you reuse it if not there's a separate part number that's sort of like a rebuild kit for this cup assembly right here i got my bin with all my replacement stainless hardware and stuff so as i start to reassemble if there's anything even remotely wrong with any of the hardware or it's rusty i don't even bother i just replace it and then i got my batteries with the new trays and hold downs ready to go and the cable i made and the straightened out exhaust flapper all the oil and everything is all cleaned up the new filters on there and everything's ready to go in the oil's full uh capacity says 5.9 quarts up on the data tag. I put 5.9 in there and it shows a little bit high in the dipstick, but that's because the engine hasn't cranked to fill this back up. Uh, it's always a messy procedure changing the filter on this. 803 alpha is a little bit easier than the 802 alphas because your battery is not right there. So at least you get a little bit of something like a rag under to catch it, though the batteries are not in anyway. We're able to see it in the fast forward. I have the little adapter and then like a hose coming off. I may consider selling that as a little kit because finding all those pieces and finessing it together is kind of a pain and you're never gonna not make a big mess uh if you think that'll be a good kit for me to have available on my ebay store let me know i may source all those parts in bulk anyway i'm gonna take a break and have lunch and then making the repair on this because basically what needs to happen is you have to cut these crimped pieces and then what i've done in the past that works better is cut these to length put them on the injection pumps clamp them into place and then put this in place and then put clamps because obviously you're, I'm not have a crimping thing and then you use hose clamps up top here. All right, everything's completed that I wanted to complete. Just a few notes before we check for fuel leaks. I thought I had battery covers on hand. I don't, I got them on order. I just ordered them while I was here. The new pieces of fuel line that I cut, I should have made them a little bit longer because what's kind of happening is I have them pushed all the way on the barb as far as they'll go on the injection pump. And then they're not quite going all the way up on here. I could take it apart and do it again. I'm gonna see if this will work and hold, I guess. So real quick, I'll just hit the dead man crank here and make sure it's gonna turn over. One last check, make sure nothing's in the way. Cause with the oil change, it'll get some of the oil moving around. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is move it and let the fuel prime. 
So it's going to be dry. Let's just sit here and wait. Oh, it'd help if I tightened up that fuel filter enough. <laughs> See, this is why you check, right? Instead of just firing it up. So what did I do wrong there? All right, so the video ended up going a little bit long. So what I'm going to do is cut it short here and pick up on a part number two where I left off. And uh, here at the end of the video, after I stop running my mouth, uh, the little link will pop up to subscribe and to the part two video.